If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode In of this episode. This one. Pime, pump Mind. Whoa. Oh. Oh, whoa. sorry. Mind Pump. Uh, we get some, dyslexia. We get into some pretty deep stuff. Uh, now, the first 25, 29 minutes. Hang in there. We actually uh, have a little fun time bullshitting a little bit. Uh, I talk about cordyceps. It's an interesting mushroom uh, that you can take for performance. We also are sponsored by Four Sigmatics. So if not you try, the psychedelic kind. Yeah, not those kind. No. So if you want to get We're uh, still looking for that sponsor. Cordyceps, there, the, uh, the place to get it is foursigmatic.com. Spell the word four, F-O-U-R, sigmatic, S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump for 15% off. Then we talk about sucralose. Uh, a lot of people don't know that one serving of pre-workout may actually exceed what the FDA says is acceptable. Like double Whoa. or triple the amount. It's for ridiculous. Your daily intake of sucralose. We talk about uh, movies. Adam talks about the movie Atomic Blonde. Yeah, go uh, see it. Which is apparently better than it sounds. The female uh, James Bond. And uh, Adam does what's called speed listening. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. mm. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what do we think about people who go vegan who say that's just how they, they feel better that way? Do we still think it's better to eat things in moderation for those people? Then we talk about what the hardest subjects are for us to talk about. Those, these are the sensitive subjects that we all find are difficult to even this bring up. Justin weird. has so many that we actually had to cut out a question because there were yeah. so many things yeah. he said. I went about. on and on and on. <laughs> it gets legit deep in that particular question. Finally... We answer the question about how we've grown as personal trainers. Like, can we pinpoint when we got on that path of really becoming the trainers we are to get today? Mm. Uh, finally, this month, again, it's one of our favorite promotions. Uh, we are giving away access to our private forum for free. All you got to do is enroll in any of our MAPS programs or bundles. In other words, get yourself started on a MAPS program. Pick whichever one works best for you, whether you're want to do our foundational-based program, which is MAPS Anabolic, or whether you're athletic-focused and you do MAPS Performance, or you're more of a stage presentation-type person, you want to focus on aesthetics with MAPS Aesthetic, enroll in any of those programs or a bundle and get on the forum. And the reason why it's a good idea to get on the forum is because then the people on the forum, there's about 2,000 people on there, uh, made up of trainers, doctors, uh, fitness professionals, they can kind of help you along the way. It's a great place uh, to be, and also that price goes up um, after this month anyway. So again, private forum for free. Enroll in any maps program or any bundle, and you can find it all at mindpumpmedia.com. You guys know I like to stack things with my pre-workout coffee. You are a stacker. I'm definitely a stacker of things mm. inside inside your body. The my body yeah. inside the coffee. I like that. That then goes inside my body. Because mm. here's the thing with caffeine. Uh, Chimera does a good job of putting the nootropics and stuff in there, which kind of balances out. But then yeah. I add other stuff that gives me the more calm, clean, focused high. Mm. Because I have a tendency, unlike you, Justin, who is completely immune I to am stimulants. Just wired. You are completely immune to stimulants now. I am. Completely. Well, I'd love to, you know, I have to have them. You drink. Minimum a gallon of coffee. A <laughs> yeah. Come a on, man. You're a minimum, exaggerating. A yeah, minimum. It's more like three quarters uh, a gallon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's... If let's, I, go, let's all calm down. If I had as it's much... like a double gulp. You know if I had at 7-Eleven? If I had as much coffee as you, I'd be able to see into the future. That's yeah. that's how powerful... Well, I do. That's why I come up with innovative shit. Wow. Yeah. That's your secret. That is. No, for reals, though. I, uh, I like to take things to augment and balance... Uh, what I do with my caffeine intake. So okay, one of the things so I add, one of the things I add is ashwagandha. Uh, ashwagandha is excellent with caffeine. My wife's taking that now, uh, <clears throat> thanks to recommendations from Jessica. So. Ashwagandha is a very mm -hmm. good balancing herb. Uh, I don't have any any brands or anything to mention. I'm just talking about. No, it's just uh, a good. It is. It's a really good herb. one. It's it's used quite heavily in Ayurvedic uh, medicine. Um, it actually uh, raises testosterone too. If you have low testosterone. And man, uh, I'm not taking it for that particular reason. I like to take it because it balances me out when I'm uh, like I'm having a lot of caffeine. Yeah. 
Uh, I've also. Well, helps you deal with stress too, right? Oh, it's a it's a balancing herb, right? It just helps balance it out. I've also in the past I've cycled in and out of using uh, cordyceps, which I've talked to you guys about. You guys are do you guys know the history of cordyceps in terms of the popularity of cordyceps in this country? I don't school me on your fungus. <sighs> so, cord- you know There's it's a, a fungus. fungus among us. You know exactly. You know it's a fungus, and his name is Sal. Every day you surprise me. <laughs> every day, huh? That was that was that was that impressive, huh? Well, just every day, yeah. I, there's yeah. something new that I learn about. He's you. Just, yeah. But uh, so cordyceps I got pretend to be dumb. So I forgot which Olympics it was. Me too. It's a lot of work. I don't remember which Olympics it was, but the Chinese swim team, fem- women's swim team, was crushing everybody uh in their performance and they were attributing their their progress or at least their performance to the use of cordyceps not because they were taking steroids but uh it was the cordyceps so then all this uh like all this uh attention went to what cordyceps do for the body and why they're good and uh here's the funny thing about cordyceps it's a fungus that grows in uh caterpillars no joke. It takes like over inside their body. It fucking takes over. I think it's caterpillars. If I'm, maybe Doug, you can look this up. I think you're right. I think I've never it, seen. You know, it. I it's always, a parasitic yeah. fungus, which all fungi are parasitic in some way, and it takes so it over. Utilizes the host. It to takes get over to the its fucking caterpillar, and it grows out, and then the, the caterpillar's dead, and then it becomes this fungus that grows out of this caterpillar. Is this body how they? It, is this how they figured out? Like, is there like is some crazy. tribe somewhere that like eats caterpillars on a regular basis and they found out like, man, I've got this, like, wow, I feel great. Right. <laughs> I feel so mentally sharp today. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. what are those caterpillars I ate? Dude, like, you got to, you got to think to yourself. Is that how we figured yeah. this out? Well, I want to know who the first guy to do all this shit was. Like, what a brave son of a bitch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> this caterpillar looks a little funky. Let's put that in my mouth. Yeah. So, oh, there it is. So what does it grow out of there, Doug? Is it out of a caterpillar am i right uh, on this arthropods uh, out of arthropods so it's not just caterpillars it's uh insects that belong to that uh category of insects not sure what arthropods are hmm. uh but um don't anyway. worry our boy mark farrell will definitely school you Correct on that us. on the forum oh yeah later today <laughs> it's his favorite thing to do <laughs> so anyway uh, uh, shout out shout out shout to, out buddy shout out to marky mark smarty pants i love it when he <laughs> keep I lo- checking i love keep it, checking i love it when he gives us uh like pretend comment uh, compliments. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh. Like he's like, yeah, guys, you guys are interviewing people you guys and try really hard. It's and good. you guys, uh, you know, you say the same shit. I know exactly what you're gonna say, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it's really good. I'm like, what? What happened? <laughs> it's like, thank it's like, you. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like a shit sandwich. Yeah. That's what that is. It's like you're fat, but it looks good on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know you, I mean? you wear it well. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so this uh, these this, are disgusting images that oh you're doing, right Doug. Now. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, disturbing. This uh, particular fungus has um, properties. If you read about cordyceps, it's spelled by the way C O R D Y C E P S. It's one of my favorite uh, supplements to to play around with. It's been for a long time. It has no. I remember when we were at Paleo Effects, how excited you got when you got a chance to meet meet the uh, four Sigmatic guys. So you were just well, like, those ah! guys. Those guys just own. I, in my my opinion, they own the market on. Uh, suppl- fungi supplements because they do the dual extraction. I was going to ask you, what is it that they're doing that's better than, because I know there's a lot of companies that are starting to get into this. It's becoming very popular. I see it now even in your normal supplement shops. My buddy was yeah. just talking about, he's, yep. he's a supplement shop owner. He owns two of them and he's like, this is like the hottest thing right now to get a hold of. What is it about that company that you like so much? Because you were the one that introduced it to me. So when we went to Paleo FX, I was like, "Fuck, I am going to talk to the to these people." And we met uh, one of the, like the, I don't think he was a CEO, but he was a decision maker. He was like a, he was a big shot. So I was able to talk science with him. But anyway, the thing about mushrooms that's interesting is when you use them as uh, when you use them medicinally um, or as a supplement. There are things you can extract, you can get from the fungus uh, when you do like a dry extract and things you can get from a water extract and they're both different. So in like, um, in Ayurvedic medicine, they'll use one for certain things. Like here's the, the, uh, the water extract for these particular things and here's the dry ex- extract for these other particular things. Well, uh, Four Sigmatic does dual extract with all of it. So you get everything with uh, their process. And I've always just liked their product. I've, ever since I started using them, it's the best. Uh, those are the best uh, mushroom-based uh, supplements I've ever used. But cordyceps, when I do it with my coffee in the morning, with my workouts, I don't notice a huge effect with my like phase one style training. So if I'm going heavy 
and doing few reps. I don't notice a ton. When I notice an effect is when I'm doing my supersets. Uh, so my, more stamina. Yes, it's a stamina supplement. So when I was doing jujitsu, cordyceps got really popular with the, the jujitsu guys that I trained because you do notice uh, more stamina. Is that where you got it introduced to it first was in jujitsu? That's yeah, that's the first time I started oh, taking it. so that's it. a long time ago. I've been, I've been, it's fairly new to me. I, I did not. Cordyceps have been around for thousands of years. They've but I, I, I feel like I've never heard the fitness industry talk about it as much as I have in the last probably two or three years. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's getting a little more were you, popular. Justin, were you introduced to it before mm-hmm. then? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. This is the first time I've really uh, heard it uh, being introduced, you know, in the fitness world anyway. Yeah. So some companies will take what they think are the, um, uh, the active ingredients out of cordyceps and then they'll, concentrate them and turn them into and they'll say okay this one has the highest amount of this particular thing the reason why i don't necessarily uh, like it, that leave it to big herba or pharma <laughs> yeah and the reason why i don't necessarily like extract that, it multiply it sell it for more yeah it's because then the fuck out of it i mean you then you kind of uh okay so all these uh these plants and herbs and stuff that have been used for a long time have been used a particular way for a long time so what we know of how they work is based off of that. When you start taking individual things out of it and concentrating them, now we no longer know what they necessarily do mm-hmm. and there may be more potential side effects or it might even be less effective. You know what I'm saying? So anyhow, um, yeah, I, I did this morning, I did um, uh, like a faster paced superset type workout and I just noticed that I don't get, you, get, you know when you start to get out of breath, and you're pushing yourself, and you almost feel like you just can't anymore. Mm-hmm. And have you ever been in those zone workouts where you're pushing yourself, and even though you're exhausted, you just feel like you can keep going? Yeah, I get you more still of a motor. Yeah, I get more of that mm-hmm. uh, with uh, with cordyceps. That's and cool. I, I like to cycle it, so I'll take cordyceps um, with my endurance based workouts. Yeah, I was gonna say so that's much. probably the only endurance version you know I see in your guys' training for the most part, right? The more yeah. the superset or like yeah, muscle endurance. Yeah, so it's like training. phase three style. Yeah. Um, you know, training like phase three that you'll find in, or even I'll uh, have to try that in. I, I, I phase four a couple of hit workouts. Yeah, that's when. So that's, I'm gonna try that. It's huge for that. It's huge Sweet. for that. Mm-hmm. So now on the supplements, since we're on the topic of supplements, uh, I just read something very fascinating that I'm going to post about a little later today on Instagram. It's going to piss everybody off. You know, my favorite kind of stuff. <laughs> Yay! So, sucralose, our favorite artificial sweetener uh, to hate on, only because it's the one that's most common. Yeah, they put in, that in everything. In shitty supplements. Um, I did not know this. This is interesting now. that This is based on a site that I'm reading, and I did a little cross-reference, and I found that they were actually pretty accurate with this information. So... There are some potential negative side effects to sucralose, and there is an acceptable daily intake that is recommended by the FDA. So the FDA actually says, here's the acceptable daily intake of sucralose. Now, two things. One, I don't trust the FDA as far <laughs> as I can throw them. So, And they're a massive organization, so I can't throw them very far. Don't trust them that much. So whatever they're saying is acceptable, I will always venture to say way less is acceptable or none. Nonetheless, they've identified an acceptable daily intake where they actually find if you eat more than this, that they have identified, the FDA has actually identified negative effects, negative side effects, uh, including long-term side effects. And that acceptable amount based on the FDA is five milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So So, so let's do something simple like a- So a 150-pound man- it would be 340 milligrams of sucralose a day is what they're saying is acceptable daily intake. And remember, their studies are a grand total of six weeks, 12 weeks long. I still Damn, don't trust like it. A lot. Yeah. But still, right, 340 milligrams. Oof. A can of soda will contain approximately 40 uh, milligrams in one can of soda. A typical can of soda. That and one <laughs> by the way, the sodas down. By the way, one Splenda packet is about five milligrams. So that's whatever, right? So based on the FDA, you're probably safe. Based on our opinion, I'd say probably not a good idea. But nonetheless, you guys get the uh, get the the drift of what I'm trying to say here. Now, this particular company took one of the more popular pre workout supplements and uh, got information from them. Did they list the name or no? Uh, no, hmm. I'm not going to list the name either. I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it. Um, And this popular pre-workout supplement, which 
I would assume most are probably just like are that. around here. Yeah, right. Because okay. most of them have all the mm-hmm. blueberry raz and bubblegum, yeah. whatever, lightning and, lemonade, yeah, and all that. Yeah, right. Lightning and lemonade and all that shit. Not to mention the colors yeah. and shit they put in to make it look the way it does, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, UP brightness. Yeah, it's not even a color; it's just brightness. No, it's just brightness <laughs> coming out of my yeah, dick. Yeah, when you pee in the dark. Yeah. Uh, so this popular pre-workout supplement per serving contains. 334 milligrams of sucralose. That's a, That's approximately 30 packets. 30 packets of Splenda. Wait a second. I'm confused. Yeah. How do? How does it have so much? Uh, mm. Well, they put it in there. I know, but what? <laughs> what dump it in. Does it, is, it really ne- is it really necessary to get it that sweet to... That, I know, right? Well, That's, what's what sells what sells insane. pre-workout supplements? There's only two things that sell a pre-workout. Mm. Or does it taste that bad otherwise? You know, well, like, is it like horrible? Have you ever? Ha- okay, so well, we've made our does. natural. We've made our natural I mean, one taste before, and it tastes bad. like. Remember uh, when we did that? Yeah. <laughs> when we when I had you guys taste the like, let's just. I was add tr- the I drank that for yeah. a very long time. Actually, I was, I, mm. and I still recommend to people that I, I, I'll be the first to admit. Here's the deal, like you know. Back to, I've been training hard again, and we've had some days where I've been up here back to back with interviews and so that 5 a.m. and I and I've been trying to be consistent about the gym, and I'm like, I need something to fucking get me up. I need a pre workout type of drink, and so I make our because our, our own ingredient individual, yeah, our individual ingredients. I, I was trying I, to think of a comparison. I was like, hmm, maybe a troll's asshole. Yeah, for That's what? what it tastes like. Oh yeah. yeah, the one that we made. Yeah, it tastes like to me. It tasted like ground up bones. Mm. Almost what? ground up bones. Yeah, like it's like. Remember how I thought it tastes uh, like like bitter le- lemon water. Oh, that's because of the citrulline. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, to me, it, it did like have a little like, bit like of lemon, lemon water. But anyway, uh, three hundred thirty-four milligrams of Splenda or sucralose in a serving of pre-workout. And remember, I just said that the you the, the FDA, which we don't trust anyway, yeah. <laughs> says that that's already you've already hit your max limit. Now, if you consider the average person who is super into fitness, they're probably having what every day? Pre-workout, protein um, shake, pre-workout. Protein you gotta have it before your workout. They're probably having two shakes a day and a, a fucking pre-workout. Mm. They're probably well above what the FDA so says. Yeah, they've safe. doubled down on the If FDA. that's what the pre-workout is, what are these protein shakes? What are like a cookies and cream So here's, from, the, here's the fucking look problem. Look up a brand. Here's the problem. None of them, None of them will list on their label how many milligrams of sucralose are in there. None of them. If you look, go ahead and buy a protein powder, look on the back, and it'll say sucralose as an ingredient, but it won't tell you how much. They don't, they're not, uh, they don't have to. It's not law. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So you don't know. We don't know what's I in wonder there. if like the law, I wonder, we have to look into this. I wonder if like, because FDA regulates it somewhat. So I wonder if the the law is as long as it's under... What they nope. FDA regulates is the daily. Nope. No. No. That's so loosely regulated. It's not. There is no. Well, I know the FDA doesn't regulate supplements. Period. Yeah. So I know that. Yeah. So but so how do they get away with that then? That's fucking crazy. Uh, because they do. They they. So here's here, they do. That's a great here's answer. how the here's how the supplement. <laughs> you're, it's, like when you're, it's, like when, it's like when your mom used to ground you. You're grounded. Why? Because I, I said so. Therefore, I am. Because yeah. I said so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know how the you know how it works. They uh they do what they want to do until someone tells them that they can't. Yeah. And then and then say stop. Uh, mind pump tells them to stop. Yeah. Mm. So knock it off. Which is which is I mean that's why we've always advocated the natural route. Wag because of my finger. They're, no. they're, they're going to flavor it with things like you know m- what is that monk fruit extract and stevia and that kind of stuff. Which is uh, I mean so far as we know a lot better. Um, but yeah, trip off that. So if you're taking all these supplements like your artificially sweetened supplements and maybe throwing a diet diet soda or a diet monster on top of it. You're you're above what the FDA says mm. is uh, is safe, and the FDA is full of shit anyway. So, holy cow, right? Yeah. No wonder you're getting all these that uh, is excess, man. That is yeah, way too much. Yeah, and um, and uh, you know we've talked about this on previous podcasts, but uh, artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose. What did you say that did, does the FDA go into when you're beyond that? What are some of the side effects that what did they say with the That's negative? a good question. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd I think be interested to see that. so the side effects that the FDA is looking for are things like uh, that are reported, you know, reported side effects like mm. irritability, like dizziness or, or headache or, you know, that kind of stuff. Nausea, you know, diarrhea, whatever. Yeah. They don't examine, Blood. they don't examine the one thing that because they never knew to look for it, that we know sucralose really has a bad impact on, which is gut uh, flora. Because sucralose, 
although it may not interact with human cells, it does interact and affect uh, bacteria. What did Dr. Ruscio say? I know you guys talked a little bit about this. What, did, what, what was his t- intake or uh, take on all this? Did you talk to him at all about it? He's Yeah, he's like, don't. I mean, uh, that was At his- all? Yeah, he's like it's not a good idea. It's, it's it's he said it's probably not a good idea. So an alternative, a better alternative would be something that's sweetened with stevia, obviously. Right? Stevia is your 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 better alternative. Your best alternative is nothing. Not right. To have any sweetener but at all. let's be real. I mean, let's be. It's it, it's impossible to find something. Even like your best organic products and stuff like that are going to be sweetened with stevia, so that so it doesn't taste like dog shit when you're drinking it, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And at least at least that's coming from a stevia plant, right? I mean, yeah. I feel like that's and it's interaction. A, le- a lesser evil mm-hmm. of, of, of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even that we say, take that in moderation. You still should go for whole foods. But like I say all the time, it's impossible for me to get my, my protein oh, yeah, I would just, day in and day out mm-hmm. without a supplementing. Yeah, something. Rule of thumb, just go organic and natural like that. Those two things alone will do a big, uh, will, will uh, make a big impact in terms of, uh, you know, the healthier gut and, and long-term potential long-term effects. Again, remember these, there, there's no really long-term studies mm-hmm. because how would you fund one? Like how would you take a bunch of people and give them sucralose on a regular basis and study them for 30 years? I don't even, it hasn't even been on market <laughs> right, that long. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? Not to take a detour, but I'm going to, uh, did you guys, had you guys see the preview for the movie Atomic Blonde? I have seen the preview for it. Okay, yeah. so I totally did not want to watch it because it looks like a stupid Char- Char- it's a Charlie Theron, Theron, but yeah. it's a was a female it good? version of James Bond. Okay, I went and saw it. it was good. You liked it? Yeah, I did. I really? Because really I didn't think it'd be good. I, it was really good. I like her though. She it was, was awesome. now. It was done. Of you do. Uh, it was yeah. done. It was. I, I got to look and see who the director was because I could tell that the film was. Um, it was shot. Uh, it was unique, right? It reminded me of like watching a um, like a Quentin Tarantino film, although it wasn't like like that. there's a flavor to it. Yes, exactly. That's thank you. It, there's a, there's a special flavor to it that's not traditional. I love films like that. I love films that are shot different. Me I, too. I, I watch so many movies so to get something. So so you, so you like Sin City? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That's just kind of off the wall. Uh, graphically cool graphically cool, oh, cool. I'll watch it then. story told from different angles you know what I'm saying like nice yeah. not not your typical film that that's super predictable and so it, uh, so I and I know that that's why it doesn't get like it didn't get like a ninety percent review because because I think the simpler a movie is like pulp comic or they, there's some kind of genre for that. Is there? Well, this did, like a, yeah, it wasn't Sin City ish, but it, where it was like Sin City is that it's shot differently, right? So that's what I mean yeah. by it. oh, well, like, then I'll go watch it because I don't want to watch it because it looked to me like your typical like oh, okay, you know, special agent killing people and it's all you know <laughs> all these like special effects and slow motion sh- fights and all that stuff but if it's like what you're saying girl, no it's cool like, and, and I'm it, in. <laughs> enough was going on with it that it makes me want to watch it again because I know I was actually kind of trying to figure it out for the first bit like okay what's going on here She's what the was idiot. that one movie with it was English special agents it was uh, rather recent. part two just came out what's oh, it called yeah, it's uh yeah, 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 kingsman yeah, yeah. kingsman fucking good movie great movie yeah. great movie that was a movie that hilarious surprised me. too at the end oh yeah yeah so, such a funny that uh, was a really good yeah. surprising this, movie. part two just is either coming out or just came out part the second one yeah, i'm gonna watch it that. Yeah, yeah i want to watch no, it. the first one was great I you really know there's it. one movie i think i've brought it up on the show before that uh the the movie the one movie that i can think of right now that surprised me the most you know you ever go into a movie and you're like this is gonna suck and at the end of it, you're like, wow, that was actually a really fucking fun movie to watch. Machida or whatever? No, no, no. I knew, I felt like that movie would be awesome. And uh, it was even better than I thought. Uh, Pacific Rim. Yeah, I saw that. Did, did you, were you surprised by like that as well? I saw it on TV, I think. Yeah. It had, um, I don't know if I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That one actor, I like him a lot. Uh, Egris. Uh, is the, it Egris? The black dude? Yeah. You know, I've been told I look like that guy by several you people. Did you just say he's a black dude? Yeah. yeah. And he looks like you. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm Sicilian. Know, you get the, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, get, I, got the, I think he's way more handsome than you, bro. Sorry. Well, I, I, of course yeah. he is. He's who he is. But he, I had I heard rumors like he was thinking of doing James Bond a while back. What's his name? That would have been cool. Egress something. We got to find Egress out. Egress Alba, I think. Something is like it? That. Yeah, something like that. Why do you a, lot of, a lot of people. Uh, the he's reviews, a good actor, dude. You notice we we have a oh Idris Idris Idris, Idris. my bad this guy so does, do I look like this guy right here let me see a little Let's bit see. yeah we, 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 there's a little you know what we I should do a mind pump IG post of like a comparison. oh I do like that guy yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been told 
it's literally gotten DMs. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do like a split screen and we'll we'll vote. I've gotten DMs from people who said I look like him. If you were a black guy, you would kind of look like that. Uh-huh. He is, uh, even though you guys are built different too, though. No, we're kind of this. Look, he's got a little bit of that narrow muscularity. He's got some good forearms. You mm. know what I mean? Kind of looks like me a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's got the white hairs in his face and beard. He is. uh, He was the main guy in one of my favorite, all-time favorite TV series. A Mm. must. The Wire. The only. The Wire. The only series. I haven't seen that yet. That I have watched three times. Wow. I've never in my three life times you watched three the series? times I've watched the series over. That's how fucking good it is. God, you're like a whoa. God, you watched a lot of TV. Dude. I do. I watch a lot yeah. of TV. I do. I tried to do that. With Game I do a of lot Thrones, of things, but man. I couldn't do it. Uh, yeah. Are you a multitasker? Ever, when ever you since watch TV? Hey, ever since I started listening to these books on three speed, I got all kinds of extra time to watch movies now. <laughs> <laughs> three speed doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, triple does it? Time yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got you got a train yeah. up to that. What do you think though, you are Neo from the Matrix? You can't I go. I, that's a page it's out like of Tom Billy's book, man. When he it. said that, like this, it just went boom, like just knowledge bomb for me. I was like, what? Yeah. You can listen Two to it faster. And then the first time I did it, I remember going like. This is not going to work. It's going to be. I already have a hard time paying attention. If I speed it up, it's going to be worse. It's but go right over your head. The opposite is true because it's so fast. It pay forces close attention. Exactly. Yeah. It forces. It's like the whole concept. Weird. We talk about flow state. How when people do a backflip off of a thing, how it for, everything slows down for them. Uh. The same thing works in your mind when you're reading a book at super high speeds. You have to really focus to retain it all, and you just progress up. Like so, I started at one point two five, then one point five. Then 1.75, then two, then two and a half. I actually don't listen to three. I listen to about two and a half, is, and depends on who's reading the book because if it's somebody. That's fast. How do you get, two all, and this, half? How do you yeah. get all this storage on your phone? Because I keep wanting to add all these books. I have to, Hold on, I have dude. I'm gonna, I have to do that. I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to play our podcast. I'm going to yeah. play our podcast. I'll get a at book and, and it just kills my. Because I want to see what it sounds like. No, we, it only goes up to two for podcasts. Let's see. Books go up to three. Oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, uh, this is actually like wow, you listen to faster than that? Wow, yeah. that's annoying. Well, we suck. Uh, you don't get you annoyed know that fast. You know what? Uh, at first, it was. You gotta remember, I didn't go from like I just said. I didn't go you slowly from one, worked your way up. Yeah, I worked my way up. So when I first wanted to, when you go from one to one point two five, there's just a little bit of difference. It just cuts out the dead air. Then from one point two five to one five, then it sounds sped up. Actually, actually, when someone puts on like so, every once in a while, Katrina and I, when we're listening, we'll slow the book down because we're like, eh, we're not, we're not speed reading. We're just li- enjoying this time together, so we'll listen to it slower. It kind of annoys me because it's slow. You sound like the Micro Machines guy yeah. you when know, you go that fast. You, I'm you telling, just dated us. I'm yeah. telling you guys right now that <laughs> that was you know you talk about all the, the cool machines. things that we've picked up from our guests that have been like like great knowledge bombs and things that we. Tom Bilyeu giving me that piece, I feel like it's, I mean, I've been able to rip through books at a faster speed so, and, and retain as much, if not more than what I So ever here's had. the thing with that. So Boom. you, you've, you've said this many times on the podcast, how when you read, like not listen, but read how you have trouble, uh, assimilating information by reading visually, mm-hmm. but listening audio, you know, audibly you, you, you do much better, right? Much better. Uh, I'm the opposite. So I can definitely listen, but uh, for me to really retain it, to retain it, I need to have someone there with me to to talk about it while we're doing it. I, can, I need pictures. Yeah, <laughs> coloring book. Yeah, coloring book. I I'm visual. Justin's yeah. like, I'm not reading this. Has no pictures. This is stupid. This is a stupid yeah. book. How do I understand this? Braille. I, I I'm visual. If I can, if you give me a a book, I can blow through it very quickly. I can read very fast and I absorb it. Uh, well, so I do better visually than I do audio. audio. I do though. Every book that I do audio, I also purchase because a lot of times what I'll do is let's say I'm I'm reading through and I you know went through a couple chapters that night or that day that I really liked. I'll go back through the book and actually highlight certain things that I want to remember so I can reference it later on. And between reading like that, highlighting the book, like I mean, I, I retain the information. Still, unfortunately, though, with all that, I'm still not at the level where you the way you can. Re- I, it blows my mind how you can regurgitate something like that we all have read. You know, we'll read a fucking study together, literally. Yeah, and then you'll and get it's on the immediately pod- gone out of my head. Yeah, right. And yeah. And, and, and like I I absorb the information and I now have that knowledge. I feel like, but in order to teach it, I need to fuck it up four or five times and hear someone else talk about mm-hmm. it again and have mm-hmm. dialogue about it. Then I feel like I can yeah. I can share it where I feel you have the ability to turn around right after you've heard information. It's a superpower, Sal. It is a, definitely a superpower you have, and I've tried to teach myself 
but it just doesn't happen. It's you know, uh, can't have everything. It's not a superpower. I'll be I'll be honest with you. It's totally self. It's selective. I don't know how or what to control. Like That's I right. will rem- I will it's a superpower. forget shit that I shouldn't. For yeah. I should not forget. Like the other day, I was ordering something online. Okay, this is a true story now, and it asked for my address. Forgot. I forgot my fucking address, dude. <laughs> Literally could not remember my fucking address. You don't have address. enough space for that. Dude. I had to go on my phone and go and do the map and be like, home, what oh, is that? I, oh, yeah, there I it is. I lost. I will forget. Sh- I'll have a client that I'll train for 10 years. I'll run into him at the grocery store and I'll What's be like- What's your name? I don't remember your name. I remember your workouts. I remember yeah. your, your your imbalances. I remember our conversation. <laughs> you bench 165. Don't know, do you know how embarrassing that is to go to the grocery store with a family member or something, right? And then uh, run into someone who I'm... Like, sub- hey, who- guy. Bro, it's been like, you know, it's only been like six months since I've seen this person yeah. and I'll be with someone and then it's time to do the introduction. Yeah. So I end up introducing the person I know and oh, I'm hope terrible to God they too, say... So I struggle with that. Oh, yeah. it's horrible. That's the but worst. then I'll then I'll remember like... Oh, there were only 14 people in that study. It was only 12 weeks long, mm-hmm. and the controls were like, <laughs> you know. Thankfully, I have a podcast where I can use this bullshit because yeah. otherwise, well, I am <laughs> complete waste of fucking. You know, it's a complete waste. It's, it's purely applicable for it's, what we do. So it's, a it's, complete, it's all good. It's yeah. a complete waste. Yeah. Doug, bring on the bird. Okay. <laughs> this quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Eat, Sleep, and Run. That's my cousin, Stephanie. Hey. Yay. We La- enjoyed having you in the studio. I'm going to say this. Last time that she was, last time she had a question, like six months ago, my uncle inboxed me to let me know that that was her. And I said, yes, I know that was her. I said, <laughs> did, you, did you know? <laughs> yeah, did you know? Did you cousin? realize? I said, yeah, I know. I'm going to say this. So I, was, I told myself the next time you guys picked one of her questions that I'd uh, give her some love. After meeting your, uh, your, her, your cousin, I can say now with good, strong, like, confirmation, like, You've got uh, you've got attractive genetics in your family. <laughs> oh, he's hitting on attractive you. Attractive genes. Yeah. Just feeding into it. You already know she likes mm. you more, bro. Stop it. No, she doesn't. Did yeah. she say that? Did that she say was, she likes you more? Sal's the favorite. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Of course. Oh, that's weird. Sal. The Italian side. Oh, because my. he. Oh, my God. Because, yeah, because he, he speaks weird. in certainties. Yeah, everybody loves that shit, dude. They're yeah. like, oh, God. Uh, tell me more. <laughs> like, oh, he great says it, one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he says it so confidently. It must yeah. be true. Yeah. Everything. Just Just pour it on me. All right. All right. Sorry, Doug. Yeah. All right. Here we go. What do you say to a person who said they are going vegan made them feel way better? Is it still everything in moderation or would you say some people would benefit from cutting out meat completely? Yes and no. Yeah. So this is a great, this is a great question because uh, we talk about moderation. We talk about balance. We talk about the benefits of different ways of eating, but there's one rule. There's one ring to rule them all. Now there's one rule that is above great all, reference. That is above everything when it comes to nutrition, uh, exercise, you know, whatever you're doing. The one rule is this: listen to your body. Okay, so I don't care what I say on the podcast, or what Adam says, or what Justin says, or what your doctor oh, says, you or care what, what I say. Anybody says to you uh, in terms of this is the best thing to do, and this is what's healthy, and whatever. At the end of the day. And of course, you have to be in a healthy state of mind. So if you're if you're crazy, don't listen to your body because you might be listening to some crazy. <laughs> First, you got to identify that you're crazy. Right. Yeah. Identify. <laughs> identify the Step good connections. Yeah. Am I crazy? But listen mm. to your body because I've had clients like this. I actually. Uh, so I used to train this um, anesthesiologist, uh, Mike. If you're listening right now, he's a good. He's a big fan of ours. Love the guy. Super intelligent human being. One of the smartest people I've ever met. And we would have these conversations about nutrition. And his expertise wasn't nutrition, but he was just an intelligent uh, human being. And he was vegan, and his goal was to build muscle with me. So I was I would try and see if I can talk him into considering eating meat because uh, there's you know there's certain things that you find find in meat that are beneficial that you may not be able to find, or at least it's hard to find in plant. Um, uh, and you know there's obvious benefits to building muscle. Uh, from eating meat uh, for for many people, and I told him about creatine and how you may need to supplement with creatine because studies show that 
vegans actually get a boost in IQ. Uh, ironically, I'm telling a fucking genius this, but uh, they get a boost in IQ when they take creatine probably because they're not getting it from uh, plant sources. And so we're going back and forth and I'm like, well, what made you go vegan in the first place? And he goes, well, he had traveled with, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Doctors Without Borders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's this great cause, amazing organization, wonderful organization. And by the way, I know I talk uh, about Western medicine and sometimes I have a bad, I say bad things about it, but I have a lot of friends who are doctors and every single one of them does it for the right reasons. I actually have yet to meet one and personally where I'm like, oh, this is a crappy person. Every single one of them truly wants to help people. And all the ones that I work with, <laughs> let's see, I've probably trained uh, maybe 14 or 15 uh, doctors and surgeons. And I think all but two of them actually would volunteer time every single year mm-hmm. and would travel out of their own pocket to some of these places and live in these incre- in these horrible conditions just to like provide anesthesia for children for, you know, cleft palate surgery or for, you know, whatever. So anyway, he, he traveled with Doctors Without Borders and he traveled, I forgot where it was, but it was a high altitude. There was lots of hiking and lots of physical uh, activity in order to get to some of these areas to uh, donate his services. And he was anesthesi- an anesthesiologist. And he told me how uh, he was just exhausted. He would just get, and he was, he was a collegiate level, highly competitive swimmer. So he was an athlete uh, growing up and he's like, he would just get fucking exhausted. Well, anyway, he started eating like the locals ate in a, and where he was, they ate vegan. And he said he couldn't believe how good he felt. Like he had all this energy, his digestion felt better and he just, just in general, he just felt so much better. When he came back to the States, he started eating meat again and immediately noticed the difference. And he went back to eating largely vegan diet. And every once in a while, I think he throws in uh, like dairy. Mm-hmm. But he says he just feels amazing doing it on all levels. And I'm not going to argue with that. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to debate that, you know, sure, meat has got... I'm not, not going to debate that, but I feel like I have to chime in because what I have found with clients where this is true, like exactly, I have stories just like this where a client has has gone vegan and they've been like, "Oh my god, it's this is this is it for me, right?" Mm-hmm. And the, the the common denominator in all of them is this: they before that they weren't on any diet, so one already being conscious of what you're eating you'd be surprised on just what tracking does, right? Just because you start paying attention Mm -hmm. to what you're consuming, how much better people start to feel when they're more aware of the things that they're consuming. Well, that's a good point. Because to eat vegan, you have to plan. Absolutely. This is just one of the points I'm making. The other big one when it comes to vegan is you end up eating a shitload of veggies Mm -hmm. that, and I'll tell you right now, Personally, I don't even come close to eating enough veggies. It's the reason why I've been drinking, and I've been drinking the green juice lately, and I notice a huge difference already. And it's like I don't think it's because the green juice is so special. It's because I'm lacking there. I'm not getting enough of that. And when I introduce it into my diet, I feel so much better. And this is what's really common with clients is. Now that they have this diet where all of a sudden they can't eat all this meat and they have to eat really within these strict borders, it all of a sudden they end up eating all these great colors and different veggies that they weren't consuming and eating an abundance of it. And I'm talking two, three, four times more than what they were. And there's a lot of great benefits that we get from eating all these vegetables. And that is what they're really noticing. It's not yeah. the, I'm not eating meat anymore. It's that, oh, now I'm starting to get a lot of these these foods I was missing before that are so high in nutrients. And now that I'm feeding that in my body, opposed to all this other shit that was in my diet, now I feel amazing. Yeah. I think, you know, exactly what you said. Like, I've always kind of like thought, you know, maybe this is just because they haven't had enough vegetables in their diet. And, you know, for a blanket, like across the board, that's primarily the majority of people. That's why they, they gravitate to that, that particular diet the most. I was just talking to, um, like a a Uran actually, when we were doing the podcast with Josh Trent on wellness force and, um, he actually is vegan, but, um, what was interesting about him is like, he is an insanely, dialed in tracker, 
right? So he actually went through, I, I think it was like 24 different types of diets and then led him to, you know, even pursue going far, you know, learning more and more about nutrition and, and uh, getting to the level where he is today. Um, and he just like in having like monitoring this process and having this continuous uh, glucose monitor and, um, you know, tracking, but like what he found, you know, his body actually responds better. So, I mean, the, the thing is like everybody has, you know, a, a very individualized, um, you know, makeup. So like a blueprint that, that works best for them. And so I think that, um, you know, to, to be able to get to that place, you really have to do, you know, that due diligence and, and get to the point where you really know yourself. Well, no, that's you, a great point track. because vegan, a well, by the way, well planned because you can just stop eating meat and you can eat garbage. Right. You, know, you could eat nothing but potato chips and soy burgers and have you guys seen I'm sure I know you guys have but if, for the listeners like you go look at the meatless category of processed foods and it's more processed and it has more the irony, ingredients right? than you're eating yeah. like more processed yeah, food of, than yeah yeah you're, 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 a lot of yeah. a lot of cases are you're robbing Peter to pay Paul yeah. yeah you're trading out these symptoms that make you feel better to get some other potential symptoms that may not make you feel so good yeah. in the long run it's because like, you're eating all this processed shit so I mean, no, no matter what, if something is working for somebody and they like it and it's it's conducive with their lifestyle, I'm pro whatever. Like I'm pro you eating better. Like if it makes you feel better, it's easy for your lifestyle. But what I don't like is when people attach that with, oh, it's because I'm vegan. Like, well, yeah. do you really do you are you somebody who pays attention? And this is why I mean, Sal and I remember back in the days we used to go back and forth with this stuff like when people start speculating on how they feel. And we're talking about someone like Sal, who I think is on a whole nother level of awareness with nutrition. And I still challenge him when he talks about how he feels uh -huh. when he's not tracking. So you can't tell me. And if a client came to me and said like, oh, I've been eating this way and I feel really good because of this. It's like, well, yeah. you know, what were you tracking before? And do you know your water? Do you know your sleep? Do you know what you've been doing exercise wise? Do you know how much sun you've been getting lately? Do you know if you your carbon intake is increased? Do you know if you're eating less processed? I mean, there's so many variables that can make you feel good or bad that you could be doing more or less of now and to attach it to a diet, I don't like. Well, a vegan diet, a well-planned vegan diet is a massive upgrade to the standard American diet. Yeah, so, yeah, right. Any so, diet is in that many. Any, any, some, any, yeah. any level of yeah. tracking. If you go on the paleo, Understanding the, what's the going vegan, in your mouth is a step in the right direction. The carnivore right. diet. Yeah. I mean, every diet, anything that is, is put together for whatever spin they put on it for health reasons is better than what the American diet is. The now, American diet is so fucked up. Now dude. that now that <laughs> being said, there definitely are people um, who simply do not tolerate animal sources of food very well. Right, this um, is fair. And they range everything from allergies to just just regular food intolerances. And here's what you want to consider too with when it comes to veg. We're talking about eat lots of vegetables, right? I don't care what you eat, generally speaking, and I say general because there's always exceptions, but generally speaking, you a, a, the bulk of your food should be plant, should be uh, well-planned, well-sourced plants. I mean, if you consider, again, if we go back to evolution, if we're you know hunter-gatherers, you got to consider the cost and risk um, and time it takes to hunt yeah. and kill animal. I mean, if we're in a tribe- The downtime. And we're trying to survive- and on the one hand, we've got all this available vegetables and, and roots and tubers and whatever that we found naturally growing. Or I can say, hey, Justin and Adam, let's go hunt that fucking buffalo over there. And one of us might die doing it. It's very dangerous. We might not even kill it. It's going to take a long time. It takes a lot of energy to chase that thing down and kill it and carry it back. I mean, vegetables are just easy to hunt. If they're there, you get them and you eat them. And it's not a problem. This is why the agricultural revolution exploded the human population because we no longer had to do this very expensive, dangerous thing called hunting. So in, in throughout all the human evolution, most tribes probably went vegan when they could. And then when they couldn't, that's when they became hunters and then they ate the hell out of meat. So there's definite benefits for a lot of people, for some people, I should say, to avoiding uh, you know, meat products. Uh, but uh, And then there's, there's also this side of it, okay? Most vegans who are long-term vegans don't do it for health. 
most vegans who are long-term vegans do it for moral reasons. And that's just a fact. Statistically speaking, if somebody becomes a vegan for health, the odds that they'll stay vegan are very small because their motivation behind it isn't as powerful as a moral reason. When people do things for moral reasons, when it becomes a fabric of who they are and it's their belief system and they believe killing animals is immoral Mm. for any reason, their motivation to not eat animal products is very, very strong. Which I understand more yeah. of that for and sure. And that, now that being said- Just don't throw blood on me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, don't be an yeah, asshole. Don't be an asshole. That being said, if, you're, if it makes you feel better emotionally or spiritually or whatever you want to call it to not eat animal uh, products, is that going to make you healthier? Yeah, that too is going to make you healthier. So at the end of the day, I always circle back to listening to your body- and, uh, you know, learn how to listen to your body first and then listen to your body. I'm actually right now in the midst of uh, really working on the new nutrition guide. Um, and that's a big part of it is uh, listen to your body, but also teaching you how to listen to your body because for so long we've learned to ignore. I want to make another signals. point too, though, that I think is important that we didn't talk about with vegans is almost every vegan that I've trained uh, that has came to me and has wanted to build muscle they tend to have the hardest time because not getting things like meat in your diet, it becomes challenging to get enough protein. Can it be done? Absolutely. There's Mm -hmm. vegan bodybuilders. So there's definitely people that can be vegan and that can build muscle. I'm not saying that's not possible, but they tend to have a really hard Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. hitting their protein targets when you're vegan. So that adds a new challenge. So if you're somebody who's already really skinny and you're trying to build muscle and then you're also trying to be on this vegan diet because you think that's a better way of living or healthier way for you to live, that's something to take into consideration also that, well, how important is it for you to build muscle? Because if you're really trying to build muscle, meanwhile, all you're doing is eating all these leafy greens, you're having a hard time hitting those proteins. Bottom line, there's just simply, the bottom line is most vegans at some point have to supplement. It's a fact. Uh, There are certain nutrients you simply do not find uh, in plants that you have to get from animal sources. And uh, and, I mean, again, I talk about creatine. Uh, They've done several studies. You give creatine to the average person who eats meat and there's no boost in in cognitive function. There's a boost in cognitive function with vegans when they take creatine. That alone will tell you that there's something lacking uh, in their diet that they're not getting. Next question is from Rocky Matolo. What is the hardest or most sensitive topic for each of you to discuss? Uh, How do you like that question? Well, I didn't see that coming. Who picked this one? Uh, Uncle Sal. Uncle Sal. I almost feel like we should pick it for the uh, for each other because I don't. Let's, no, uh, really, you want to you want to see? We just start poking at each other. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll poke at myself. Um, poke your own. If you guys don't know what yours, I, I know right away. I had an issue with this this uh, couple days, past couple days. Oh, you well then share then for sure. So <clears throat> right now, and this is different for me, d- depending on whenever you, you know uh, throughout my life, right? Uh, what I'm what's sensitive for me now. Hopefully, will not be a sensitive topic in five or ten years. And what was sensitive for me ten years ago is no longer sensitive. So, in the past, if you asked me about body image issues, about being skinny, about you know all that stuff, it would have been very difficult for me to talk about. Now I talk about it; it's not a problem. It doesn't trigger me. It doesn't cause any changes in emotion anymore. It's very easy to talk about. Um, today, as a uh, as a as a grown man, um, you know, I'm 38 years old now, and uh, it. I'm better at talking about the sensitive subjects. In fact, I will purposely talk about them knowing that it's better to do it, but I've identified that they're very difficult to talk about. And right in, right now, the biggest challenge for me by far has to do with uh, my children and it has to do with my uh, relatively recent divorce. It's been over a year and a half now um, that I've been divorced. It's very difficult to talk about because... I'm noticing that, uh, and I'm right now I'm listening to um, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, which, uh, by the way, um, very, very few books that I can, I, I love reading. There's Every book I read I, has some kind of impact on me, but very few of them I'll consider life-changing. And this one is turning out to be one of those life-changing books. And it might be just because of the time of my life right. that what I'm you, reading what it. What you need right now. Yeah. So I don't know if it would have been life-changing if I read it you know, 15 years ago. But uh, right now, it's very life-changing. And I'm identifying a few things. And one of them is the tremendous and very painful um, guilt uh, that I feel for uh, my divorce. And it wasn't just my fault. Uh, it was definitely a mutual thing, both me and my ex-wife. 
agreed on the divorce and we were very amicable amicable during during the the period of uh of breakup it was something we both agreed needed to happen so it wasn't like one particular thing so it's not like i i specifically did one thing that i feel guilty about it's just in general i feel very there's a lot of pain and guilt behind the divorce because uh of the challenges that it poses to children um especially coming from my perspective and my culture that values family and defines value in very specific ways. Like in my culture and my fa- in, in the way I was raised, family was mom, dad, and children. And the priority of the family were the children and mom and dad worked together, worked out to get, worked things out together and stayed together for the children. And divorce was one of the worst things you could do to your kids. Like we would talk about it when I was a kid. Like when we find out someone got divorced, it was like this unbelievable, horrible thing. And the discussion was always those poor children. You know, that's a very common thing you hear in my family when we talk about divorces. Oh, you know, it's, uh, I feel so bad for those kids to have to go through that. And in my entire family, I have a massive family. Only one, I only have one divorce in my whole family. Well, now there's, now there's a few, but, uh, when I was growing up, there was none. And so, um, it's probably what kept me married for so long. I should have you know, objectively speaking, we, we should have got divorced, you know, five years into our marriage. But um, it, the guilt that I have and the pain that I have behind it uh, affects how I am uh, with my kids. Because everything that happens now, anytime my daughter uh, is not herself or my son is upset well, you blame about something or, you know, I'll tell you what happened the other day. This was very, very difficult to talk about. But me and my ex-wife um, are uh, dual dual custody, so it's 50%, 50-50. And we both do, uh, objectively speaking, when I can separate myself from this, and I logically look at it, we do a fucking great job. We do a really good job. We both co-parent still, even though we're both uh, divorced. But um, how it feels is very different. And uh, she gets them for a week, and I'll get them for a week. Uh, sometimes it's different, but right now it's a week on, week off. And, um, you know, I went to, uh, you know, grabbing my kids. They stay with my mom during the day while we're working. And at the end of the day, um, you know, my, my daughter's asking me, uh, if she, when she's going to see mom. And I said, oh, she might stop by today and you'll see her later or whatever. And so sure enough, my ex-wife stopped by to see the kids cause we're at my mom's house and, um, it was time for us to leave, to go home. And my daughter didn't want to go with me. She wanted to go with her mom. And that was, uh, and I, you know, that's totally a normal thing for kids to do, especially at that age. Of course. And I'm sure there's gonna be times when they do that for, to me as well. And part of the reason that she may have wanted to go with her mom is because her, she has this, uh, this old iPhone that she uses to play video games on and I didn't let her bring it to my house. So maybe she thinks she's gonna, whatever, whatever the reason, maybe she wants to sp- spend time with her mom who doesn't matter. Right. But it hurts a lot because, uh, you, I feel like. Maybe I'm doing something wrong or, you know, she doesn't feel like she's seeing enough of either one of us. And so she's coming, you know, there's this kind of challenge that's that's happening, you know, with her. And I don't like to see that. And it's a very normal, because this happens, and this, the part that sucks is the logical side of me sees no problem with this. There's no issue. The, my kids did this when we were together. The kids do this with parents all the time. I want to go with dad. I want to go with mom. But because of the divorce, I've attached all this guilt and pain behind it. And it fucking ruined me. Um, for, and I had to, you know, I, you know, it, it took me some time to really process that. It took me a whole evening and, a, and the next day to really process through what I was feeling behind that. And it's like, it's like anytime something happens, anytime my kids ask for something like, hey, dad, can you buy me this? You know, I want to buy it for them right away because I feel guilty. You know what I mean? I want to give them everything that they want. I want to make everything perfect or I want to do all these things or spend all this money on them. And it's all driven behind this this pain, this guilt, it's a very, very difficult, sensitive topic to discuss. And it's also sensitive and, and, and difficult for people around me. Because when this was happening, when she was saying, no, I want to go with mom. I, don't, I want to stay with mom tonight. I could see my parents and my, and, you know, my, my son, like I could, I could sense them thinking like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, what do we what do we say now? What do we do now? And immediately after, my mom's like, you know, it's normal for kids to do that. Can I feel her wanting to 
console me over this type of thing that's normal that I know logically is normal. So, um, I, you know, I identify, I see this as a very, very good opportunity for growth uh, as a person for myself and also as a parent mm. um, for my kids. I'm already a way better father than I was when we were married already. I can already say that objectively. I'm a far better, more connected father. But, um, I mean, talk about being challenged. This is, uh, I've never felt a challenge quite like this before and it's because it's dealing with my children. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I hope to continue to grow about it. And I'm glad we had this opportunity actually to talk about it on the podcast. It's, it's, it makes it easier. Always therapeutic for you. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Justin, you have one? <laughs> uh, that was deep, man. I don't, I don't know, like, just talking about like serious issues like that, I think is enough for me to have <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Just, Justin's like, I got a whole boatload of crap, these things. It's difficult guys, for me. I feel like I crapped you guys out. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> I should have gone last. Yeah, yeah. Well, I couldn't go first because I, I still, that's why I deflected over to Justin because. Well, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I, I don't go because oh. I, I don't have one for you right now. So that's why I deflected. There's no over. topic that you, that. Uh, I mean, it's the thing is like, yeah, I, I would, I would talk about whatever. Like, that's the thing. Like, it, it just depends. It depends on like how it's all framed. And, and I think what's difficult for me is if I get cornered and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sort of defend my stance or like, I don't know, I guess, I guess like verbally, like if we're sitting here and we're like, um, you know, like something that like you've, you've identified that's wrong with me or something, I'm going to get super defensive on it, Mm. you know? And and that, and that's, that's like still that's like within me. Like I get really like, I can't like, I can't just like be like, Oh, Hmm. You know, like, yeah, let me evaluate that. It's like, fuck you. You know, like, (laughs) like I have this like immediate, like, like, my hands right here and like I'm gonna push back at you first my first instincts to push Courtney calls me out on that all the time because she's like I'm not like I'm not trying to like create conflict with you I'm trying to identify things and like just admit you know that you're failing or, or something like within this is something that needs to be addressed and um yeah that's like that's a constant thing for me I don't like talking about like if something, you know, I have going on or something like that is like not doing well, you know, like I just don't want to talk about it. Mm. And, um, you know, that's probably something that you should talk about. Right. Because, you know, how are you going to work through it? Like you're like, I don't like getting help. You know, that's one thing. So I think, uh, you know, along those lines, like, yeah, I find it's, it's, it's a tough thing for me because I just I want to like take it all on and, mm-hmm. and internalize it and like I can fucking do this and like because like that's just been drilled in my head that's like you know maybe I'm weak or I don't have enough of the mental fortitude mm-hmm. to overcome this and um, really like I should be seeking more help with a lot of things. So do you, do you you know what's interesting about that is um, it you it requires more strength. For you to ask for help mm-hmm. than it does for you to do shit on your own. Absolutely. So you know if you, it, that might actually help you. I was like that for a long, for a while, and I, and someone told me I don't remember who told me. They said something like, um, "It's harder to it's it takes more strength to cry than it does to not cry," and it kind of struck me like, "Oh fuck!" Like I consider myself a strong person, then I should seek out the things that require me to be strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time in my life, it was to to admit that I need help. Whereas before, I was like, no, I can do this. So I'm like, wait a minute. It's easier for me to, to not ask for help than it is to ask for help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, I You know, yesterday, Taylor and I were talking, and he gave me a nice compliment, although I don't know if he was meaning to, about, um, you know, he's like, man, out of everybody, I really feel like you're just, you're really open-minded, Adam. You're willing to... Uh, meet with people that you would totally disagree with, hang out with people of different circles and and try things out that are against what you believe or think. And I really believe that um, when it comes to like sensitive topics, I could think of stuff when I was younger uh, that like I had a hard time sharing, like talking about my dad's suicide, for example, like as a kid, like just not understanding that and you know, I remember when we had the Girls Gone Wad podcast here and she was like, uh, you know, I wish you would dive more into your childhood story and what you've been through. 
thinking that that was like something that I avoid because I don't like talk about I, like I have no problem talking about that stuff. It's not sensitive to me at all. I'm pretty much an open book and I, I, I don't know what point in my life did I start doing this, but I seek out things that make me uncomfortable like this because if I, if it gives me emotional reaction, like if you, one of you guys were to, if we were talking and then you did something right. And I caught myself getting like agitated or firing back or getting me what for sure. And I talk about this on the podcast all the time that night I'm fucking thinking about that. Like I'm evaluating how I responded to you guys because you obviously poked a button with me Mm -hmm. and I'm not going like, fuck Justin, fuck Sal. I'm going, Whoa, I do the same thing. What did, what did, why did that bother me? Or why did that get me all riled up? I must got some shit I need to work on Mm -hmm. in that area. And I don't stray. I'm not. A, I'm not afraid of any of that shit. Like, if you got something you want to say to me that is, that you think is a sensitive, to fucking bring it. Like, tell me. Like, poke poke at me. Tell me that you don't like this about me, or you want to know more about this because you think I'm afraid. To, I'm not afraid to talk about anything. I've been an open book for a very long time. Uh, I've shared any sort of insecurities. I think I've shared on this podcast before. I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a topic that I'm really sensitive. To, to talk about. I, I mean, do you guys feel like there's something that you guys bring up with me that I, I avoid or I get all pissed off or, or I have a, you, that you read on me? I mean, well, share, I, think, I mean, this now's the time to share with me, right? Well, <laughs> this would be a good time to, <laughs> let's see. Why don't you say something and see if I get riled some up. darts at me, <laughs> yeah. assholes. Yeah, I, right? Like, I, well, I think, you know, the, the three of us are pretty, we, we pretty much do that, right? Yeah. We pretty, I mean, we, we all pretty share much that sentiment. You know talk. what I mean? That, yeah. That's not like, and even when I'm sharing that, it's not like, like I said, I'm not. I'm definitely open for you guys to jab at me and like point things out. Like, yeah, but I don't. I don't want to. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to be a dick right here. But out of the three of us, I I could have definitely said that about Sal, and I know that about Justin. Yeah, I know that. Like, and I've done it to you. You you embrace yeah. it. Like yeah. you don't you don't hide from it. Right. But and I've I've intentionally came after both of you on the podcast because I know it makes good radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I know that they're sensitive topics. I know that talking about the divorce and the kid stuff that I know that is tough for you, and I challenge it all the time. Well, and li- I, life is. Um Life's funny because when you when you're at that point where you feel like it's all like oh fuck I got it all under control it tends to throw shit at you and mm-hmm. I I had a I had a string of things that that I, I mean I felt like fuck I'll handle it I talk about it I'm talking about it on the podcast like right now this is a difficult subject to talk about and I'm talking about it on a podcast that I know you know tens of thousands of people are going to listen to so. You know, my, it's my gauge of sensitive and difficult to talk about is maybe different than someone else's where they can't even get the words out, right? Right, right. I'll get the words out and I'll talk about it. It's not a problem. But, but you know it affects you emotionally. Well, so. I, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to talk about it and be aware of, of what it does. You know what I'm probably sensitive about? If there's something if there's something I'm currently working on and I know I'm working hard at it and somebody's like fucking trying to remind me of it all the time. Like let's say, I'm trying to think of a good one that like recently where... There's something that I'm trying to get better at, whether it be business, whether it be personal relations, and I'm actively putting in the work. I'm Mm -hmm. working at it. I'm putting practices in place. I'm doing something. And we'll use an analogy that isn't me, but let's just say like, you know, currently if I was out of shape and I'm working towards getting in shape and somebody's just like, hey, bro. And they're like poking at me in that Mm -hmm. arena. And it's like, you motherfucker, like I'm tracking my food right now. I'm training every day. Like I'm working towards that. And if you were really paying attention, you would see that I'm making progress in that arena. Fuck you for pointing out something that I know is an issue of mine and I'm working on. Uh, So I guess if someone gets me on something that I'm currently working at, and you and you dig at me, and it's an area I already know I need work on, and I'm working on it. That could probably get me sensitive, and I could, pro- but I'll fire back at you. But I would just do it. I'd handle it just like that. So, like, let's say there was an area like that, and you guys like called me out on it, and I got sensitive about it. I'd be like, "Well, fuck you, bro. I'm doing the work. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting yeah, the. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm putting the. I'm putting it into practice. Well, like, you don't. You definitely don't like uh, if someone says that you're. N- lazy or not hardworking or not working hard oh, enough. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm, so yeah. that's a very sensitive topic. Mm. And and that's actually okay, good one. Yeah. That's a good one. If you want to get me riled up, uh come after my work ethic because I pride myself on on my work ethic and there's a lot of things that I do that I don't talk about that doesn't exactly translate into uh 
money all the time or that other people see that I'm constantly doing. And I'll give an example. That's a really good one, Sal, because that's probably something that I am sensitive about. If you if you want to if you want to rile me up, make me feel like I'm not putting work in because I don't know very many people that could outwork me. And sometimes the work that I do does go unseen. For example, part of this job that we are currently in right now requires a lot of relationship massaging. We are constantly in contact with all kinds of people and very important people. And you can't just expect in business, and I think this is for people that are entrepreneurs, this is important to to recognize this. You can't expect that you're just going to build this network of people without putting work in, without giving to others. And part of giving to others requires giving time. And sometimes that's text messages and phone calls and emails, taking people out to lunch, going to dinner, doing things that you know, may seem like it's not a big deal, may not seem like it's work to the average person, but it is fucking work. It and it has a lot of energy. It does. Yeah. It, it requires a ton of fucking energy to do that. So if someone were to call me, which you guys don't though, you guys have never, you guys have never like called me lazy or no. made me feel that way. Well, but so, why would we? I wouldn't call any, I remember we got cornered on that, like when we were doing that silly game show and we completely all avoided that mm-hmm. question because it's like, <laughs> no, none of us is the laziest well, in the group. It I, just I, doesn't work that I, way. You, I guess the question would be to ask yourself why, besides the fact I know that why, you, so I'll get there. I okay. know where you're, I know where you're going. Yeah. So why that is, is because even as much work as I do, I always believe I can do more. Mm, and yeah. so if you say that, it stings me because I'm like, fuck, I could be doing yeah. more. I yeah. could be doing more. Mm, right. And that's- You feel like there's some truth in it. Exactly. Mm. It's it, Which is true, right? Anytime we get sensitive about something, uh, uh, somebody who really truly reflects, there's some truth to that, yeah. right? It's so, true on any end of that, right? If somebody's like, you know, Elon Musk and somebody says, oh, you're failing here, like, and, he, like, and it's true, he has to recognize that. It's like, are you, but really, is that like- Right. So you know, something and, you got to focus on? Th- and that's the perspective thing, yeah. right? This is learning to have detachment perspective and say, okay, what can I take from this obviously that bothers me obviously that's it bothers me because i could potentially be doing more but then also being mindful and going like you know hey i am doing all this i am working hard i am doing those things and recognizing yourself for those things just like and that relates a lot to what sal's sensitive thing is it's like bro you are a really good dad yeah bro you are doing you're probably one of the best dads that i've ever met so for you to beat yourself up over one scenario like that that you're totally overthinking is crazy and for you not to recognize all the good things that you're doing and allow that to get you emotional, that's your talk you got to have with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So, which is very similar to the one I would have to have myself if I let somebody right. really, which you know what, we like, all have our buttons. I don't think I, mean? I don't think the average person could get me that riled up. I think I would take it to heart maybe if one of you guys said that to me, which I don't think any of you would because I think we all know how hard everybody works in here. Uh, but yeah, if someone if someone got me there, that would be a little sensitive. You probably would, you probably see me react. <laughs> get the wrath. Yeah, you probably yeah, get yeah. you probably get me. Even, <laughs> even Superman has kryptonite. That's it, man. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for ten percent at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up from Prime and Glory. You openly say how much each of you have grown as trainers since your early years. Can you pinpoint how you got on the path to becoming the trainers you are today? So uh, this is actually pretty clear for me. I can too. This is very, very clear uh, in terms of what made me uh, the kind of trainer that I am today and what's going to make me the trainer that I'm going to be tomorrow because I think I'm going to be an even better trainer and you know five years from now than I am even today there's two things one is uh, co- reminding myself uh, the purpose behind what I do so being a trainer was never a job for me it was never a paycheck for me although sometimes it would do that every once in a while where I'd focus on the fact that I'm making money focus on the fact that it's a job 
when I would bring myself back to my purpose, which was that I really, really do, I truly do love people. Uh, nothing is more fascinating. Uh, nothing uh, draws me in more and nothing will, um, nothing attracts me more than just the human condition, than people, children, old people, uh, people in special populations. You know, one of the reasons why I love training, if you look at the kind of people that I like to train the most, I love training advanced age, and then second place is kids, and then third place is special populations, people with, uh, you know, physical ailments or mental ailments. And the reason why I love training them so much is because it, full, it makes me feel uh, more pur- purposeful to what I'm doing because it definitely is awesome to get an athlete to perform better. And it's also great to get someone just in better shape. That's all amazing. I love that too. But there's something about helping an old person uh, walk up the stairs or you know working with a kid and seeing that kid's uh, outlook on themselves change completely. And so it was really about my purpose that forced me to examine my methods as a trainer. And the second thing was being uh, open-minded to training myself. That pushed me in many different directions as well because I was always driven uh, in my own training and my own nutrition to, in, you know, and my, my motivation and drive was, was different in the early years. It was about building muscle, getting strong, building muscle. But because I was so driven to gain those things, um, I was constantly examining my training and questioning uh, training and reading other people's opinions and reading scientific articles and questioning what I thought was common knowledge. It's the reason why I switched from a, a body part split, which by the way, when I switched from a body part split to more frequent type of training, which eventually resulted in more of a full body approach, it was totally out of style. It was totally, nobody was doing it. There was You wouldn't find a single bodybuilder or muscle building expert that would recommend that you train at least if you were advanced with a full body approach nobody in fact they would they would laugh and scoff at it and the only reason why i went down that path was my constant self examination and uh you know i went and started reading these old articles and these old strongmen and these old you know this old advice and i started saying you know what's the worst that could happen if i try this approach let's see what happens and then that opened my eyes and then i kept doing that i kept pushing myself uh in different ways and identifying things that blew my mind in terms of what was working for me and then that made me a better trainer because then i was able to apply that you know those things to my clients i mean it all started with that and then it turned into questioning <coughs> eating small meals every day then it turned into Uh, looking at fasting and how that affects the body. Then I started questioning protein intake. Then I started looking at veganism, which was like, you never went, you didn't even like that. You didn't even talk about it or even you laugh at it. Uh, if you're trying to build muscle, well, I started looking at maybe there's some benefits to eating like that. Um, and then I started examining, um, you know, wellness and I started noticing side effects of wellness in terms of muscle building and, and all, all those two things really drove me to become a better and better trainer because I was always self-examining and I was also, also, uh, I was also driven by my love of people and that it always made me seek out what worked the best, not what I thought was supposed to work or you, what I was yeah. told was the best. Do you remember how old you were? Um, I would say... Like when it really started for you? So, like here, so my off. career is different than your guys' is because... You both uh, started as trainers and really stayed in the fitness side uh, your whole career. So I started as a personal trainer, became a fitness manager, which is a managing trainers. Then I became a general manager. And so then I was managing production of the gym. So although I was very connected to the trainers and the fitness, I was no longer training people until I started my, until I bought uh, my own personal training studio slash wellness facility. When I opened that up years later is when I really got better because now I'm really uh, deep in being a trainer. Yeah. Do you remember how old you were? I was, uh, I started uh, ABS at, um, I think I was 22 or 23. So 22, 23 is when then I really started taking off. And then from there, uh, probably the first five years was just fucking 
tornado of growth, just <laughs> just learning all these different things and growing. And mm-hmm. um, and then I started training. Doug, when did I start training? Do you remember what year you and I started? It was years ago. 2011 or 2012. Like so, so about seven years ago, six years ago, something like that. That's when I started solidifying a lot of the, the, the concepts and stuff that I uh, understand today. Um, because right around the time I started training Doug is when I started putting together the concepts of maps and all that other stuff. So those are my two drivers. Those are the two things that uh, made me a better trainer and that will continue to make me yeah. a better trainer. I think for me, um, definitely there was periods. There's, there's periods that I went through where, I mean, I went most of my life trying to improve my performance and my athleticism and just totally focused on my own um, my own success and, and w- within my own body and my own capabilities. And uh, that was really the driver for a long period of time. And um, getting into the industry, it just made sense for me. It was like, oh, you know, I, I really enjoy working out and I really enjoy um, what I can do to my body physically to, you know, enhance what I'm, what I'm currently doing. And, you know, and then getting into to training, um, I was completely humbled. And I think that this has happened to me, like it's, it's almost this cyclical experience for me where um, I feel like I've mastered something and then I'll step into just a, a little bit different like scene environment and I just I feel like I don't know anything and I'm just like humbled all over again so that being the first part of that was seeing how people move and seeing that their body didn't respond the way I wanted it to they weren't athletes I couldn't understand it (laughs) it's just like it was this foreign concept to me like why why can't you move your arm like that why can't you get (laughs) off the ground like this like what the fuck what am I supposed to do with this I had to really research I'm like okay so now I'm start like I had to really peer into somebody who's been deconditioned most of their life and they just they've never taught their body to do these very simple things and it's like people don't have experiences like you and like for me I don't know it sounds like so ridiculous but it was so mind blowing to me cuz it was just like I knew how I could do things I knew how my body worked like I could tell my body to do something and I could do it like you know, even when I would go like try to a, a new sport, like I would, or I would do like wakeboarding or something like that. Like I would get it right away. Right. You know, I just had that sort of like body awareness. Um, and so just kind of peering into that and like seeing, okay, there's a way to actually train your body to step by step kind of build up to that, that, that same kind of response for just anybody. But man, some people, it, it, you have to really draw that out for a long period of time. Anyway, that's just one example. But, you know, I went through that and then figured out um, a better way to approach somebody from where they are. And so, you know, building on top of that led me to, you know, okay, so if somebody's coming in with more experience, um, what does that look like? You know, what does a professional athlete look like? You know, how do I, how do I improve them? How do I benefit them. And, and, and for the most part in that scenario, it's, it's about longevity. It's about like, you know, like supporting their joints. It's about uh, maintaining the explosive, you know, response and movement that they can produce and, and keep them healthy and have help them have a long career. And, um, I just feel like me as a trainer to, to improve on being a trainer is to immerse myself in an entirely different um, arena, different experience, like shadow myself, uh, around somebody who's a master of that domain and humble myself and realize that, you know, like I know, I know a lot about movement and I know a lot about the human body, but somebody always knows more than me. Right. And I'm, I fucking seek those people out, whether they, you know, it's from their book or like, thankfully with this podcast, we can interview them we can take them out on the floor and they can demonstrate things, you know, for our YouTube. Um, and so I just feel like <laughs> as long as I can stay here and do what we're doing, like we're just going to keep getting better and better. And our message is going to, you know, resonate even more to, you know, more groups of people. How old do you think you were when, when that mindset set in for you? Where how, do you remember how old you were when you started like really diving and digging into to grow like that? To grow it, like just 
as a person. Well, like you said, no, you just, you just gave an example of like, you know, you had a client come or you had a person come in front of you and it's like, you realize like, oh fuck, like I got to like figure out how do I teach this person the first step? They have no awareness. Like, and that obviously sits you, sent you down the rabbit hole, right? Cause yeah. you know, once you get going there, it's like, for, there's all kinds of different directions that maze takes you. Like how old were you when that moment happened? Do you remember? Um, when, well, when I was first started training, I mean, sure it was like, I was around like 22 or something like that. But I would think for me, like uh, to identify that mindset mm -hmm. was more when I stepped out of high school and like, uh, you know, I was getting into to college and I was getting away from my family and, mm -hmm. you know, the safety net that I had established. I had a girlfriend, you know, for like three or four years. Everything was about safety, you know. And then I just decided that um, for some, some wild reason, I just I felt like I was – totally settled you know with with my life and like everything was i was just doing things like on autopilot mm. and uh and then just this wild idea i was like why don't i go somewhere i've never been before and uh the opportunity kind of came to me because i was trying out well okay here it is this actually this is interesting um i was trying out for the football team for uh san jose state and like I, my identity was a football player and uh you know i killed it in high school um and I tried out for, for a D1 school, you know, and this is something that like I got into the school. Okay, cool. You can come into the, to the walkout tryouts and you can go through this process. And I, I did really well. And I was like, you know, had great numbers, you know, squat numbers, bench numbers, like my, um, you know, my shuttle run, but my 40 time was dog shit, you know, like they really care about speed. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the first moment with that was, I failed, like I failed hard. Like I, the first time I, I, I went to sprint, I, I like, I had such a bad start that the, the coach was like, I don't know. You, like, let's have you try this again. He's like, <laughs> yeah, we, he's we like, have linemen faster. Than it's you. like, it was Go like try five, two or something like God awful. He's right. Like, I the, just, the water boy ran that faster. Right. Could we have you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, dude, it was so bad. And like, I remember just like had this shock of like, I like, what this is what i'm really good at what the fuck is going on and then like i did it again and it was like a little bit better but they just were not impressed even though i was killing all these other numbers and i was bigger than most of the guys that wanted to play my position and they're like i'm sorry man we don't have a spot for you and i had to tell my parents and it was just like fuck dude what am i gonna do you know oh, shit. and then after that it was like do i just keep being a student you know like that's lame. Like I'm an, athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an athlete, damn it. You know? And I just struggled with that. And I, and so I was like, well, screw it. I'm just going to be a really good student. You know, I'm just going to do the shit out of this. And, um, I, I really cracked down. And then this opportunity came to me. Um, this guy basically was on a plane flight with my dad and my dad was just like, you know, talking to him, whatever. And he was a, a coach for a really small school in, in Chicago and I uh, was like, yeah, you know, he's a really good player. I don't know. He just, you know, he didn't get a good 40 time and, and they didn't want, you know, to, to, to put him on the squad. And, you know, he's just kind of, you know, doing school right now. And like, it's like my dad was trying to like hype me up and all this stuff about how good I was in high school and all this stuff. And so he ended up sending him videos and all that stuff of when I played. And, and then the, the coach got all excited because like it was a position that they needed really bad. And so he reached out and everything, and then they gave me, like, a scholarship opportunity. So they, they paid for, like, you know, most of my room and board and stuff like that and took Fucking a chance on me. Out. Yeah. So – That's awesome. It's kind of like how life's really worked for me, dude. And then I just I just took a chance, and I was like, ah, forget it. I'm going, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to improve. But, like – uh, a lot of times that's happened. Like I just get fucking, I just get hit in the face like so hard. Like, no, you know, like I had to take that one. Like, like I just sucked in that moment. So. I, I was 25. I was 25. I remember the moment like yesterday for sure. Um, it was a conversation that I had with our VP. And I know that you guys know who the VP was. We'll, we'll talk names. After. What are his initials? <laughs> uh, MP. Okay. So, uh, I know. he came down and the reason why he was coming down to visit me was they had gave me an offer. They wanted me to be a general manager. I'd been a fitness manager already for four years. 
uh, I had crushed it in all three of their clubs. Uh, and by now word had got out that I was helping the sales team and teaching the sales side of the business, even though I was a fitness guy. And so of course this guy was a, a talented salesperson in the company and, uh, had been around for a long time and he wanted me to go to the, uh, to the general manager side so I could teach sales more. And I, I was really excited to talk to him the first time they came down. The offer they gave me was shit. And I was like, I'm not going to move, move positions. I love fitness. I love training. I love people and I love money too. And I was, I definitely entertained the idea of heading to the general manager side like Sal did because technically on that side, you could make more money technically, but there were people like me that were the exception to the rule. If you were really good at the fitness manager position, you could make as much, if not more than a lot of GMs. And I was in that position. I was, I was outperforming uh, most GMs in my area. And so I didn't really have a desire to go to that side. I loved what I was doing. And at that time, I wanted to just keep moving up the company uh, in that, that side of the house. So, you know, back then it would be, you'd be a fitness manager. Then they wanted you to go over the sales side and then you go over to like district level. Before that, there used to be a whole fitness side. So you could go from fitness manager to district fitness manager, all the way up to regional fitness manager type of position. And so you could stay on the fitness side of the house. And at this, at that point in my career, I was very bought into the company. I had dreams of being like a VP or a main guy in the company and making really good money. And I just, I was all mm -hmm. about the company. And, you know, when they came down, they gave me the shit off for the first time and I denied it. Then they, then he actually came to visit me and I thought, oh, this is cool. He's going to come down and visit me or he's going to talk to me and he's going to give me a different offer. And we sat in this in the office and he, he gave me this whole, this whole speech about, you know, and I, I don't remember a lot of what was said, but I do remember, uh, you know, the stupid statement of, you know, Adam, sometimes we have to take a step back to take a step forward in life. And I remember like inside, like kind of chuck, oh, right. Kind of chuckling. You also right? have to, I mean, you got to tell the audience too, like this is after years of, of, Carrot dangling, which that company was very right. fucking oh. good at. Right. And that's actually what I'm getting Indeed. to in this story is that, you know, I, I had been, you know, told all these great things. I had, I had at that point in my career, I thought I was going to be in there forever. And this was the, the turning point for me. This was when I realized, fuck this place. They don't care about me. You know, I, I realized that. You know, I, and all I realized that. Yeah. After like yeah, a year. yeah, I had the same moment. <laughs> well, yeah. I and at, at, at this time, too, you know, I'm, I'm four plus years into management. I had worked with a lot of talented people. I'd absorbed a ton. I'd grown a lot. And I would say I was kind of at a plateau. And I realized that the, the, this company was not going to look out for me. And I kind of had this like, by the way, the, the offer he gave me was a little bit more money, still wasn't enough money to get me to leave. I wanted a guaranteed salary of what I was averaging over the last three years. And I didn't think that was a lot to ask for more if I was going to take on more responsibility and potentially make you more money. And they just thought that was crazy because nobody got offered that kind of money for that position. And I said, OK, well, then I'll just continue doing what I love to do, which is stay in this position. And that's what I did. But at that, at, after that, I had a real, I was bitter, was pissed off and I was kind of angry. And like, I, I believe that even back then I was the type of person that would reflect. I was a little slower back then. It would take like a week of bitching and moaning before I finally looked at myself and said, you know, what the fuck is wrong with you, Adam? What, you know, this is, you know, how, how are you letting him control your emotions and let this company and that, and I realized at that moment, you know what, I cannot allow a company or these outside forces to dictate my personal growth. And all of a sudden, I just became, this is when I started really reading. And I remember at what I decided to do, I was like, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up what the CEO is reading. So I looked into our CEO and, and he used to do this thing where he'd email out things, books that he had been reading. And I started reading, I started with the books that he was reading because I wanted to know where my CEO's mind was and how he was directing the company. And it was awesome because it gave me so much insight. And at that moment, I realized I would never let somebody else, I would never let a company, a business, another person influence my personal growth and shame on me for allowing, for allowing me to, or for me to allow myself to get caught up in that for so many years of, you know, you know, what, wanting this company to take me somewhere, like they're going to, like, they're going to move me up and they're going to provide this for me. And I, and I thought to myself, fuck that, like, I'm going to make this for myself. And at that moment was the moment that I went on this journey of personal growth and that that's in all areas. Not so we're talking about business. We're talking about, you know, self self-help type shit. We're talking about 
um, you know, fitness and science. And that's when I started. That's when I really started to dive deep. And I've just had this thirst for knowledge and learning. And I never stopped from 25 on. But it took up until that point and that happening to me for me to really wake the fuck up and realize that, you know, every every moment, every day that goes by, it's nobody else's responsibility on how much I grow and how much I progress in this life. I have full control of that. And if I'm not progressing fast enough in this life, it's nobody's fault but myself. And when I took that ownership and I and I began to look at it like that, it changed things forever for me as a trainer, as a leader, as a businessman, like it forever changed me. And, and it's a bit of advice that I always give to somebody that if you're not, if you're not pushing yourself to grow, if you're not, it's Abraham Lincoln's, right? I have no respect for a man that is no wiser today than he was yesterday. And, you know, if, if you don't have that, that attitude that, you know, you're not comparing yourself to anybody else but yourself. And are you, are you smarter today than what you were yesterday? It doesn't matter what level that is compared to anybody else. But if you're not challenging yourself that way every single day, then you're, you're losing the game. Excellent. Check it out. Go to mindpumpmedia.com and get yourself registered for 30 days of coaching. It's free. It's available and it's free. Also, YouTube. We post a new video every single day on YouTube. It's different information and content than you get from our podcast. So I suggest going over to YouTube, looking up Mind Pump TV, and subscribing. Finally, if you want to ask us a question that we answer in an episode like this one, the place to ask it is Instagram, and the page to ask it on is Mind Pump Media. Finally, we all have our own personal pages on Instagram. You can check us out. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>